On the surface, he was a credible financial broker, able to secure multi-million dollar funding for major international projects. At least that's the image he portrayed on his social media, including the business networking site, LinkedIn. But scratch a little deeper, and it's alleged he was more of a confidence trickster than a financial whiz. It's an alleged scam that spread from Cape Town to America, New Zealand, and several countries in between. Erin has the story. Cape Town. Its seductive beauty attracts international tourists, but also the criminal elite, who often flaunt their ill-gotten gains with seemingly little fear of prosecution. It's from here that Evan Turok has built an international network designed to attract clients from around the world. He's reached far and wide, enriching himself with millions of rand in recent years in an allegedly fraudulent financial scam. His alleged victims call him the LinkedIn swindler, as he uses the business networking platform to recruit his clients. We actually were seeking about 200 million, but we landed at about a $51 million number, I think is the dollar amount we were gonna do with Evan. Brian Harveston is from Texas in the U.S. and first met Evan Torok, director of Oncidium Capital, online in 2021 while trying to raise money for a gas and petroleum project. Torok claimed to have access to the funds and a loan agreement was drawn up. But first, Brian would have to pay an underwriter's fee. So what is an underwriter's fee? What is it for? An underwriter's fee, from what we've come to understand, is, is a good faith payment that is paid from our side to a source like Evan, who is uh, going to be providing his funding services. In other words, to get the loan, clients would first have to pay a fee. In Brian's case, over 20,000 US dollars. In return, he was supposed to get funding for his multi-million dollar project, but that never happened. Evan was really creative in a way that he kept the dollar amount so low that people would spend more money legally trying to pursue him than it would cost to get the money back. 39 alleged victims have come forward so far. Based on my accounts of the victims that I've uncovered, I consider him a notorious international scammer. And uh, he's been conducting these scams since uh, we can date him back to 2017. But how is it possible that so many people fell for the scam? Elias Papastamatis, a broker who spoke to us from Sydney, Australia, says Torok knew exactly what to do. He'd dangle the carrot, and that would actually make the client and ourselves feel comfortable that this is going to go ahead. He'd send voice notes assuring Elias the deals were on track. If you stressed out with something, you gotta uh, do something, like a drink or something. But Elias started warning clients of the red flags. Turok was quick to retaliate. A, a legal letter has to go out now, unfortunately, my friend. It's false information that he's spreading around from, 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 uh, from unprofessional sources. We are holding on all, all the transactions now. All the transactions will be held. To boost his credibility, Turok relied on this woman, Renelle James, who claimed to be independent senior counsel who had seen proof of Turok's funds. It was in August 2020, and she said she'd been associated with Evan since 2014. She went on to assure me that she knew the funds were there and available. Annette Black, a New Zealand businesswoman, was trying to raise 55 million US dollars for an eco-aquaculture project. 
Agreements were signed and she paid the underwriters fees of over 4,000 US dollars. It was going to a foreign exchange company to go to Rennell to go to Evan, which, you know, for an underwriting fee is, is very unusual. The transaction, actually the payments, uh, go through Rennell. So she was ob obviously part of it. And once the underwriter's fees were paid, Torok went to ground. When I started to realize it wasn't right and I wasn't getting any answers from him, I contacted Rennell James. We've managed to get hold of Rennell now over WhatsApp and she's agreed to do a phone interview. Rennell told us she set up Eros Global Administration, a UK registered business, to help Turok process transactions with foreign clients. He said, could I please set up a company in the UK, which I could, but it was very easy for me to facilitate that and then receive the fees and pay them on to him. So I agreed to that. The two were romantically involved for about 18 months, and Rennell claims, at first, she believed his deals were above board. He showed me a letter from a bank, two different banks, which was addressed to his company, showing access to a lot of cash, but it wasn't transaction specific. And back of that, I confirmed that I had seen those funds. But funds were never paid out and pressure from clients mounted. When they couldn't get hold of Turok to get their underwriter's fees back, they'd contact Rennell instead. By like August 2021, when I realized that this is becoming a me problem, I dissolved the whole thing with Eros. But it appears Eros was still operational in November 2021. Rennell also ended their relationship that same year. What do you think of Evan looking back now on everything that's happened? I don't want to pass judgment on his character. All I can say is that had I known that this was going to happen, I would have stayed very, very far away. When I started to become suspicious, I exited. And that is the honest side of my story. It was time to get some answers from Evan Turok himself. We're outside what we've confirmed is Turok's Cape Town address in Hart Bay, and we're gonna see if we can get his response to these allegations. Hello? I'm here with the television show, Carte Blanche. Would you mind giving your details to my attorney? Sure. We gave him one more chance to respond and approached his front door. Evan? Hi, how's Hi. it going? Evan, Evan, I would strongly recommend you to take this opportunity to give right of reply. These are very serious allegations of you running an international criminal scam. That is completely false, man. I know you're in a towel, but you're welcome to change. My name is Erin, just so you know. Thanks, Erin. I'm not telling As it turns out, we didn't have that chat. But his lawyer did contact us. He's been arrested by five people the last couple of weeks and stuff, so he's just a bit nervous. In a statement to carte blanche, Torok denied any foul play in his business dealings. But that's not the way his alleged victims remember it. My, my sleep was about two hours a night and I was chasing Evan for information about what is happening with our loans. As a broker, Elias had provided Torok with dozens of clients. Five of them paid underwriters fees and never received the loans they were promised. What did you glean about his lifestyle? Lots of alcohol, heaps of cocaine, meeting up with the girls. He's a womanizer and a drug addict.
We're on our way to Robertson, a country town in the Western Cape, an unlikely destination for this investigation. It's a far cry from the world Turok inhabits. It's a sleepy town known for its vineyards and winemaking. It's also where Turok's latest alleged victim, a South African, lives. He doesn't want to be identified, so we'll call him Michael. The answers he provided have been re-recorded with an actor. In April, Michael paid over 400,000 rand in underwriter's fees into the account of Turok's new business. Different name, but same modus operandi. He registered a new company. It's called Six Capital Partners or Hat Capital Partners. And this is the business that he's running at the moment. It's here in this country village that the activities of Evan Turok may finally come to an end. Do you think the small town police station is going to be able to bring this international scammer to book? I think so. I think they will. I think they're on it and I think they will bring justice and it will be really great for our town and for the people of South Africa. Michael has filed a case with 22 sworn statements gathered from victims around the world at the Robertson police station. Elias hopes Turok will soon be arrested and believes Rennell James must also be held accountable. I want him to face the music. I want him to spend time in jail. I want his accomplice to do the same. I think that she was an, an accomplice in the whole thing. I believe that, and I think he needed her to get loans through. Turok could soon face multiple charges of theft under false pretenses. The so-called LinkedIn swindler has allegedly stolen a combined 15 million rand in underwriter's fees from victims who have so far come forward. Robertson police confirmed they're investigating. For his victims, the investigation is a vindication. The mental anguish for many of them still lingers. It's absolutely mental cruelty. Nobody had been able to get their money back. So that's how good he is. I mean, he's made a career of it. Um, and it's just got to stop. If his guilt is established, the seeds of Turok's eventual downfall will have been sown in a quiet corner of the Cape Winelands. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access Carte Blanche stories anytime, anywhere, even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.